and you're on in five, four, three. Happy Monday. Oh, oh, God. Oh. Good evening and welcome back to DNA News. I'm Steve O'Malley. And I'm John Molinsky. Next week marks the 92nd anniversary of the end of the Irish Civil War. To celebrate this occasion, I'm wearing green. Um, John, where's your body? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't quick, know. Quick, quick. And we're back, and John has put on a new shirt. As we were saying before, next week marks the 92nd anniversary of the end of the Irish Civil War. Because of this, the Dixon Network has asked us to do an entire historical recap on the war. Who knew that the signing of a treaty could start a war? The year was 1922. Wait, can I have ominous music playing? There is ominous music playing, just keep going. Oh, okay. As I was saying, the year was 1922. The Anglo-Irish Treaty had just been passed. The treaty was an agreement between the United Kingdom and Ireland and laid the ground for Ireland becoming a free state. The treaty was signed in London on December 6, 1921. Hey, Ireland's new constitution came into effect the next year on December 6, 1922. I came into the world like on that day. That's so weird. Like I was literally brought into the world on that day. Like I was birthed into the universe on that day. Uh, okay. Um, just after the treaty was signed in February of 1922, Irish Republican Army member Ernie O'Malley captured a Royal Irish Constabulary base. O'Malley took 40 uh, police officers prisoner and obtained hundreds of rifles and copious amounts of ammunition. Hey, your name is O'Malley. Are you related to him? No, I, I think it's just a common Irish name. Oh, okay. Anyway, in March 1922, the Irish town of Limerick became a historical standoff site between the members of the pro-treaty IRA led by Michael Brennan and members of the anti-treaty IRA led by Ernie O'Malley. During this standoff, both sides of the IRA fought over who would control a village of military barracks. The leaders of both sides negotiated with Stephen M. O'Mara, the mayor of Limerick. After these intense negotiations, it was decided that the, that the Limerick IRA would divide the pro-treaty and anti-treaty IRA into two separate military garrisons. Just after the IRA was split into two, a leader of the anti-treaty IRA named Rory O'Connor took occupation of the four courts of Dublin. The four courts were the center of the legal system in Dublin. O'Connor took these actions in order to defy the Anglo-Irish Treaty. In order to avert violence, a man named Michael Collins wrote up a pact with a man named Eamon de Valera to strengthen relations between the pro-treaty IRA and the anti-treaty IRA. On April 1st, 1922, a police constable in Belfast named George Turner was shot and killed by members of the anti-treaty IRA. This showed that they, the anti-treaty IRA strongly believed that Ireland should have been part of the United Kingdom and that they were willing to do anything to express that. In June of 1922, the first free state elections were held in Ireland. Right before the elections began, the, the pact between the pro-treaty IRA and the anti-treaty IRA fell to pieces over an argument of whether to include British monarchy in Ireland's new constitution. The war began ten days later because of the tensions over the treaty. One of the first acts of violence was British General Henry Wilson being shot and killed by members of the pro-treaty IRA. The two members were later convicted of their crimes and hanged. The murder of Henry Wilson angered the British government and led to threats to attack the four courts which were still occupied by O'Connor. Next, Leo Henderson, an anti-treaty IRA member, was arrested by pro-treaty members along with Officer J.J. Ginger O'Connell. <laughs> That's an awesome name. I could say that all day. Don't you dare. Too late. J.J. Ginger O'Connell. J.J. Ginger O'Connell. J.J. Ginger O'Connell. Stop! It's not even that funny. Anyway, Michael Collins gave O'Malley and his men one final chance to surrender the four courts and J.J. Ginger O'Connell back to them, or else he would attack them. When this did not occur, Collins ordered an open fire on the courts on June 28, 1922, using borrowed weapons and ammunition from Great Britain. Because of this impromptu battle, members of the IRA took sides between the anti-treaty and pro-treaty. The anti-treaty group was led by Liam Lynch and Yemen de Valera, while the pro-treaty IRA was led by Michael Collins and Richard Mulcahy. The pro-treaty garrison believed that the people had endorsed their decision in an election to vote for the treaty in June of 1922. They believed that they upheld democracy and the people's rights. The anti-treaty IRA believed that the pro-treatists were mutineers. 
The anti-treaty IRA tried to start a guerrilla war campaign against the pro-treaty IRA in August of 1922. Because of this campaign, Michael Collins, head of the NA, was shot and killed during an ambush. Now, since we don't have the budget to do all these fancy 3D graphics to show what the war was like, I took the liberty of going to the dollar store and buying a couple packs of army guys to demonstrate how the war looked. Here. Cool, one side is actually British, so that's good. Here, let's separate. Uh, we have a uh, binocular guy. I'm gonna do the red guy. A, one of these guys. This guy's on the ground. Guy. Grenade guy. Above ground. This guy is yes. shotgun. Sniper guy. Police officer. Move up these green guys over here. This is much cheaper than using computers. This guy's standing here. He's probably the general. This guy has a gun. He has a gun. He has a gun. He has a gun. He has a gun. This guy's on the ground. Alright, now we have to set up the green guys. There's a lot of green guys. Alright, so let's get this guy right here. Okay. We want to become a free state. No, you can't. I'm dead. Hey, you can't do that to our guy. We're gonna occupy some courts and then we're gonna... We'll show you, you British people. No! Ah, oh god! Ah! 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 I'm gonna get you! Uh, uh, I'm dead. Uh, I'm crawling towards you with the with the, uh, uh. Is this what you do in your free time? Play with dolls? They're not dolls. They're action figures. There's a difference. Alrighty then. Uh, anyway, back to the thing that we're getting paid to do, Steve. The guerrilla warfare. Wait, they used gorillas? No, not actual gorillas. You idiot. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about the monkey. They're not monkeys! They're apes! The guerrilla warfare prevented the new Irish government from fully forming. So to speed this process up, the NA issued guerrilla executions in November of 1922. John. Also caught up in the guerrilla executions, are the four are the leaders of the IRA who occupy the four courts. Joe McKelvey, Rory O'Connor, Liam Mellows, and Richard Barrett. In total, about 80 IRA members were executed, and about 150 died while fighting in the field. The worst of this occurred in Kerry, where there was a bomb attack in March of 1923 that killed five NA soldiers. Within a week, 17 prisoners were killed due to detonated landmines. The Irish Republican Army's campaign was mostly about the destruction of property, including houses and railroad tracks. In April, in April of 1923, after Liam Lynch, the anti-treaty IRA leader, was shot and killed in the field, Frank Aiken, the leader of the pro-treaty IRA, or ordered the remaining troops to get rid of their ammunition and weapons and head home. No surrender was ever called at the end of the Irish Civil War, and no formal end to the Irish Civil War was ever determined. However, we do know that the date that the ceasefire was called was May 24th, 1923. Okay. An election was held in August of 1923 in which the pro-treaty party won. Around 8,000 to 12,000 anti-treaty members went on hunger strike in November of 1923. Three of the imprisoned anti-treaties perished, but the majority were not released until the middle of 1924. Because of the lack of policing government in Ireland, great amounts of social and criminal violence occurred. In mid-1923, a special infantry corps was begun in order to break up labor strikes across the southeastern part of Ireland. After this, however, Ireland managed to create an unarmed police unit called the Garda Siochana. After the war ended, in March of 1924, some NA officers proposed a mutiny against the Irish military because of the lack of progress going towards uniting Ireland. During the course of the war, the total number of casualties was around 1,500 people, with thousands more injured. In 1932, the remnants of what was once the anti-treaty IRA rose peacefully to power. By 1939, questionable features of the Anglo-Irish Treaty were removed by acts of British Parliament. The Irish Civil War was widely considered a taboo, and only recently has it been studied. Well, how is it similar to the American Civil War, Steve? Well, John, it was similar because one side of the war was fighting for independence from the other side. Also, it was fought for a short period of time, 
Can you tell me any differences, John? Well, the American Hold Civil up. War... You have a hair on your shoulder. I just saved your life. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. You owe me. Well, the American Civil War was fought for four years, as opposed to one. In addition, the American Civil War was much earlier than the Irish Civil War. Also, the American Civil War had many more casualties than the Irish Civil War. Well, John, that wraps it up nicely with a cute little red bow, because we are out of time. Yep, I guess we are done. We, we thank, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. time. I'm Steve O'Malley. And I'm John Malinsky. Signing, signing off. off. Wow, that was really good. Wait. Wait, what's going on? You didn't curse at all. All you said was What's going on? Yeah, you're not saying anything that bad. All you said was Just make it stop. I don't like this. This isn't This isn't I don't know how to make this stop. This is not at all. What? Why can't you just make it stop?